Colorado <laughs> Big Buck Tags. Good old ranch house, it's like home. So this year with Clint and I headed to Colorado for our annual mule deer hunt with our good friend Dean Billington from Bull Basin Guides and Outfitters. We got Butch from Cryptech and we got Justin from Cryptech. It's Justin's birthday so uh, me and Mike decided to bring him out there and give him a little love because he does all the work at Cryptech anyway so we got to take care of him. What's up brother? Hey, how are ya? Good to be on that. Yeah. Good to see you. 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 Colorado Big Buck Tags, Bull Basin Outfitters. Justin is a great, a great archer, and he loves to archery hunt. He doesn't get to do a lot of rifle hunting, and he's super excited about this, so I'm glad to be teamed up with him, hopefully, to get him a big buck in here. He's legal. You gotta love it. You just come to the store and you pick up your stuff here in Colorado. That's the way we like it. Sweet, good old ranch house, it's like home. So it's all organized by basically weather conditions. So we got cold weather, extreme cold weather, extremely, extremely cold weather. It's just simple organization, man. Ready to go. You never know what temperature's gonna be when you wake up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be ready. <laughs> So my go-to gun for this hunt is my Proof Research in 300 Remington Ultra Mag. Might be a little overkill. That's what we're going with. Got my uh, double gun Explorer case here. We're gonna go check our rifle. But really no need to, because every time I've used this case, it's right back at zero where I left it. Snowy Mountain Rifle from my good buddy Steve McIntosh. Sent it down to me to try out and run. I'm going to shoot a three shot group and then I'm going to adjust. And then I'm going to redial my turrets. And once I do that, it should be pretty good. We have a different array of weaponry on this hunt. And Butch comes out with a brand new 6.5 Creedmoor that he just bought for his wife, Nikki. And I was pretty surprised that, that Nikki would let Butch actually borrow her favorite rifle to go to Colorado. But then I found out he didn't ask, he just took it. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get her done. So, out of the box, zeroed the gun high confidence now, you know, just always take that doubt out.
Here at, say, our base camp is at 8,200 feet. So you got quite a bit of climb from elevation, in elevation from where Clint and I live and where Butch and Justin live. So it's very important, not only because of the elevation, but because of the travel to check your zero when you get to wherever you're going. After going to school at the FTW Ranch, the SAM course in Texas, we learned to shoot at 100 yards. That's your true zero. And then your field zero is whether your scope's in MRAD or minute of angle or whatever it is. Whatever your scope is, whether it's a minute of angle or MRAD, how many clicks you got to come up for however many yards you're shooting. Quarter inch low of dead center. It's it's shooting exactly where it should be. I'm real happy with it. It's a great shooting gun. <laughs> low that right, that further that. furthest hole to the right was that second shot. Last <laughs> two were right, huh, Butch? Yeah, both of the last two were right, and the last shot was the closest one. Just, it was dead center, but at about half inch right. viewers today Here hopefully you see a 250 no, no. on <laughs> camera and we see a 250 through our scope an and then you see a 250 <clears throat> dead on the ground <laughs> and that's the hope this year the first night it snows nine inches I can't tell you what that does for deer hunting in November mule deer hunting, it's unbelievable, or whitetail, whatever, but it's just, you know, in Colorado where we're at, it's just like a funnel for these deer to come out of the big mountains right down into, into uh, where we're hunting at about 9,000 feet. A little bit of snow, like six inches. We have nine inches of snow, verified, right here in Colorado. 50? As soon as he sees a deer, he's I said 250, not 50. You've hunted with him before. He gets all kinds of things. No, I didn't. I, <laughs> him. I get all there. kinds of these things. Good to be good. We decided in lieu of going up there and getting stuck, we're going to put one set of chains on here. When we can't go any further, we'll turn around and go the other way. Up in the valley, you scout yeah. down, but then there's the whoops on it. Looks like he's got some width on him. Try to get a little closer. Should we pound him? See if you want to pound him, man. All right. We, we find a really good buck the first morning. He's 175, 180 inch mule deer. You know, I would never tell anyone who I'm hunting with, or any hunter for that matter, what to shoot or what not to shoot if, if you're happy with the animal that you want to go after. But Justin was super excited about this buck. I was super excited about this buck, and so was, so was our guide, Chad. <laughs>
you know the weather the weather conditions weren't optimal for for chasing this deer it was snowing sideways and the fog the fog and the snow visibility was limited Sometimes, you know, when you got your scope up too high, yeah, then you can't find anything because everything's big. So just turn your scope down to like six power, find the animal, you know, and then, okay, I got him, I'm comfortable. Roll back up, then go to your breathing and your squeeze off, right? So I think I was at 16 and I just couldn't find him. Right there. And that's when I looked down, you mean, you just see me grab it and turn it down? And then he started to move, and I got back on him, and he was moving. Then you started calling me, you know, and he didn't stop. He just kept going. Are you looking at the same buck? The one we just looked at. Yeah. Little, super heavy. Little buck over on the hill. Like 40 heavy. That's a wrap around your boy. Really? What's that yardage across there? 200. I can't get it all still so I can get it. I'm a mass guy, Justin. Yeah, so am I. But like I mean, he looked pretty down there. That's when I first, when we first pulled up, and he's got some character to him. Is it a five by four? Yeah. Is... That left side's five. It's a seven by four. Is it seven by four? Mm -hmm. I only saw a glimpse of this buck in the trees for you know, maybe 10 seconds, but I saw a lot of mass. I'm pretty sure that's all I needed to see. <laughs> that's a heavy buck, brother. Dude, that's an awesome huh? buck. When I was a kid, wow. my dad and some of the old timers that I grew up learning to hunt from always told me never pass up on the first day a buck or an animal that you would shoot on the last day. And I think the final decision to, for me to make that I was going to shoot him was when my buddy Chad, who was also our guide, says, I think somebody ought to shoot this buck. So that was all I needed to know, and the rest is history. I don't know, lost for words. That's one of the heaviest bucks I've ever, ever taken. I'd like to thank my friend and cameraman, Matt, who, <laughs> who spotted this buck this afternoon. Um, I don't know whether we were trying to hold out. You know, it's only day one of the hunt, but I couldn't really pass this buck up. We go down the canyon and up the other side and make it over to my deer. And I'm super excited because there is no ground train. Oh. <laughs> wow. That is a stud buck. Well, Mr. Sparks, thank you for coming on this hunt, brother. My I'm really pleasure. glad to have you here. And uh, it's your turn tomorrow, or maybe this afternoon. We got a hour and a half or so left of daylight, so Next maybe up. we can get another one on the ground. This is 
is a beautiful, beautiful Colorado mule deer with lots of mass. And he's a 190 inch deer. He's one of the biggest deer I've ever killed in my life. Super stoked, super excited. Clint, Butch, I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am. Outfitters, uh, we got a ranch that uh, we have access to. That's um, kind of a staging area for the deer once they go to winter and before they move down into Kremlin. And the plan is to go check it out, find a find a good buck, hopefully, and put the sneak on them and get one. And at the end of the day, though, the weather is absolutely awesome for deer hunting. It snowed about eight nine inches last night. Colorado, I'm seeing a lot of deer, a lot of movement, snow in the head. Um, I don't know, we've probably seen 10 or 15 bucks so far. Nothing big enough to shoot. We've seen a couple, couple in the 165, 170 class. But we're looking for a little bit bigger, but you know, we'll give her some time here and look, look out for some more stuff. So the ranch me and Butcher hunting, uh, I want to say it's about 1,800 acres and it's surrounded by uh, another ranch on, on two sides and then, and then uh, Forest Service, I believe, and then some open ground down below it. And uh, so it, it's open, but there's, there's, some, you know, there's some players around that uh, can, can work with you a little bit, bother you a little bit. Well, we just classed up a really good deer. It's probably it's a giant tree, but a giant, giant, giant. But Devin, our guide, saying he needs to cross the creek for us to shoot him. Did you take the scope off of him? No, he went down in the. He went down in the. Um, out of sight. Oh, behind that hill. You know, everything's moving all the time, and it's coming into this place, and it's just funneling in. So we're just prepping ourselves, you know, if we're not seeing what we want to see, we're looking a little bit different and trying to see what's going to be there the next day because stuff's moving in and out with this, this nine, nine inches of snow that we just got. There's two big bucks over there. One is a four by three. It's got a 200 inch frame. And this one, who knows what it is, but it's great because all those deer will hopefully naturally drift in this direction as they come out of that high country. So day one comes out. Uh, just so happens it's Veterans Day, and I'm hunting with a, my favorite veteran, or one of my favorite veterans. I got a few of them, they're all my pals. And uh, about that evening, coming just before dusk, we get back to the spot where we saw him. He's not there, you know, we move around. I mean, we just look off this, look off this hill, and there's this giant deer down there. I don't, I don't equate it to being the same deer that I saw earlier or whatever, but you know, it's a it's a haul off this hill, and and uh, I said, Butch, go. Punched out like I don't know, 2,000 meter sprint through the drift. Oh, <laughs> awesome, brother! Thanks, Boy, Devin. Man. Shooting, brother. I hit him all three times. Yeah. All three times. Well, you know, one of the things for me on this 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 deal, it was you know, I was so happy to to be with my buddy, super war hero, great guy, Veterans Day. She's the buck of a lifetime. I mean. What more, there's no more deserving person than Butch wanting to shoot that buck that day. So it was really, really emotional for both of us, actually. It was, you know, a pretty happy day. It's November 11th. We're in uh, Colorado, hunting with Bull Basin Outfitters, just outside of Kremlin. Was able to pull this off right at last light. It's, uh, 
it's now getting pretty dark on us, but had a big push, probably a couple thousand meter snow sprint going through the drifts and stuff. This, this is the uh, biggest mule deer I've ever killed. And uh, I'm thrilled. This is exactly, exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> Punch and attack, November 11th, Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to all my fellow veterans out there. A legit 202. A legit 202. And if we threw the Butch Whiting score system on there, two twenty five. He'd be like two forty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to determine if they have weapons or not. Eagle six, Saber three. Eagle three, Eagle six. Where do we find out where they are? Man, they just kind of the What motivates you when there's no one else around?